Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So today we want to talk about something even more important uh, than that. And that is becoming such a creator that, that nothing, hey, uh, and nothing, nothing can stop you if you're a creator. Now, as you know, on your journey to creation, that doesn't mean that uh, that that you always you always just have it the way you want every single time. There will be learning experiences. There will be things you need to to overcome. But that's actually a funny statement um, because we do we do actually enjoy having things we need to overcome. Does that make sense? We do actually enjoy that. So we'll talk about money today. I should live in such a world where I was so. Uh, worried about losing it all, you know, really, really worried about it. And, uh, and that was, uh, that was a, a big thing. I was like, Oh, man, you know, what if, uh, what if I went broke? Or what if I didn't have enough to feed my family, these, these sort of things. And, uh, and then, and then I started to get into this place where, you know, everyone told me I had to like, you know, face the fear, you know, I wasn't allowed that sort of fear. And, you know, I really had to get over it and all those sort of things. And, um, you know, being in that relationship with the the fear of not having enough uh, really wasn't a, wasn't a good thing, you know. Uh, but but really, neither is having no fear uh, to that because it's actually, as a human being, we're kind of a walking contradiction, right? We're we're a walking contradiction. I mean, we have this nervous system, these neurons, this unconscious mind, this unconscious facility, which uh, you know, its its main goal is to keep you alive. True, like that's its main goal is to keep the body alive. And so, so it has this idea of like, you know, what's safe and, and typically it says, well, what's safe is what we've always done. And so you have this nervous system that says, you know, I'm going to keep you safe no matter what. And since you're alive, uh, you know, whatever you've done in the past is safer than anything you've never done. So, you know, we're going to we're going to do that. And uh, and then you have this brain that says, well, I, you know, I've already done that. I actually want something different. You know, I actually want, I want this, I want adventure. Then we have this part of us that says, you know, I just want it to be easy, but if we had it too easy, we'd kind of be bored, you know? So there's this, there's this weird thing where uh, there's all sorts of uh, contradictions. So I want to bring in a, an idea today. It's actually one of my top five books of all time. Uh, it's not one of my top five books that I recommend in this program, but it's one of my top five books of all time. Uh, I actually went in, uh, I love this, this author so much. I have three copies of this book. Uh, well, I had, I had two copies of this book, and then uh, I saw that he released a box set of, of all his books, and it, it's hilarious. So I'm, I'm a total fan, and uh, <laughs> and so so I bought the box set, and then and then I wanted to have it on audio, so I have all his books on audio as well. <laughs> uh, and, and so here's the box set. I only just got it. Um, I haven't even read the box set of it. Anyway, here, so here's the box set of all his books. Anyway, so the uh, the author is uh, Nassim Taleb. And uh, the, the book I'm going to talk about and the thinking I'm going to talk about is, uh, is uh, anti-fragile. Anti-fragility. And uh, it's funny because uh, when we were thinking about who was going to be the person who uh, writes our book, I was, I was interviewing uh, all sorts of different uh, authors, uh, sorry, all sorts of different publishers. And then these guys um, randomly said, oh, by the way, you know, some of the big names that we've worked with include uh, you know, Nassim uh, Taleb. And I was like, right, you're my person. I love his books. So, so what I love about his concept um, of anti, uh, anti-fragility is, uh, well, first off, what does anti-fragile mean? Okay, well, we, we know what fragile is, right? Um, fragile is when you put pressure on something and it breaks, okay? So the more fragile something is, the more fragile something is, the easier it breaks with the smallest amount of pressure. Does that make sense? So we all know what fragile is. Now, many of us in our relationship with money are fragile. Okay. So then we have a different term and it might be, you know, undestructible, but a good term in English is robust. Robust. 
So robust kind of means it's strong. I mean, the more robust something is, it's the more pressure you put on it, you know, then the, you know, the, the more it can take before it breaks, it's robust. And so some of us are quite robust with our money, but we don't actually have the correct term for something. So we have a term called fragile that says, if you put pressure on the outside, it breaks, true? Then we have something that says robust that says the level of robustness, the more is the more pressure it can take. But we don't actually have a term for something that when you put pressure on it, it gets stronger. When you put pressure on it, it gets, you see how we don't have that term. Fragile says you put pressure on, it breaks. Robust says it puts pressure on, it stays as it is. But then there's another thing that as you put pressure on something, it actually gets stronger. So anyway, uh, he made up a word and he called it anti-fragile. And it's a, it's a really nice term. So the human body is anti-fragile. OK, you go to the gym and you work out. OK, the body gets stronger. You put it under tension. The body responds and gets stronger. Does that make sense? It gets stronger. It doesn't just stay the same. It gets stronger. So in nature, nature's actually anti-fragile. And it's beyond me why we don't have a word for this, where you put pressure on something and it gets stronger. So I would like all of you to be in a place where when pressure is applied, in your money situation, you get stronger. How about that for a term? Uh, I see a few people. Remember, if you're typing in just a panelist, it only goes to me. It just, it only goes to me. So you do need to change that, eh? Hey? If you, because yeah, I won't, I can't see you more. So what if you could be anti-fragile with your money? How could you do that? Okay, how could you do that? that? It's a really interesting thing. When I was learning about money, I had a mentor say to me very early, he said, Chris, if you want to have a lot of money, there's three things. There's three things. First, it's going to be your identity. You must be it to see it. I was like, right, that, that makes sense. I must be it already. We talk about this a lot. He said, the second thing that you need is you need to have the right skills. You need to have the right skills if you want it. If you want to have, you not have the right skills. And they said the third thing is you might got to have the right character, the right character traits, and the right way of thinking. So there's there's thinking or mental models or character traits, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's skills like what you can actually do, capability, and then there's your you know your belief system about about how and what you can have. Now, consider this. Across human history, there's been booms, there's been busts, there's been booms, there's been busts. In every boom, there's people that win really, really big. And in every bust, there's people that really, really have a hard time. But can I ask all of you, when it's been booming, the economy's going great, has there still been people faced with hard times, yes or no? And when it's been busting and it's all been going to crap, are there still people that are winning? The answer is yes. The thing is, is when the majority is having a hard time, if the majority is having a hard time and you're winning, you kind of shut up about it. So we don't hear these stories so much. I mean, think about it. In, uh, in 2008, 2009, you know, there was all sorts of people, you know, really, really, um, you know, suffering and not going well. But then there was Michael Berry, and they wrote a whole book on him called The Big Short, and he got extremely rich then. Uh, same with a mentor of mine, Ray Dalio, who, you know, at the same time, he had a 40, he was already a billionaire, he had a 40% increase in wealth when everyone else had a hard time. Does that make sense? So, so there's, there's, in every moment, there are creators finding ways to win. True. So, so that's what I want you to be. I want you to be anti-fragile. So how do you become anti-fragile uh, with, with, your, with your money and your money creation? Is, is to understand that a creator is prepared. A creator is prepared. You know, uh, a creator is prepared. A creator doesn't want uh, to have an experience of losing it all or having none. But the creator isn't worried about this. Why is the, the creator not worried about things going the wrong way. Why? Why would the why would the creator not be worried? 
The creator's not worried because they have the skills, mental models, and beliefs to thrive in any situation. They've, they're already, they've already created, they're not just robust, they're anti-fragile. People always ask me, Chris, what's the best investment that I can make with my money? What's the best investment? And I always say, in your identity, in your, in your belief patterns, what you think is actually possible, your creative process, uh, in your skills, and in your, in your thinking. There's no better investment than you, is what I'm trying to say. Right? There's no, and then that's why we're here, and you guys all, all obviously embody it. There's no better investment than you, because here's what I know: is there's going to be times when things go great, and when times when things go uh, not great, and uh, and you got to realize that in either of those you can thrive. So that's what today's about. Today's about talking about this. A creator is always prepared. A creator is always prepared, and so if you if you live in this, you you know, because the only reason that someone is worried about losing it all is they don't think that they have the authority to make it again. They don't think that they have the ability to make it again. True? Because if you knew 100%, just give me a yes if you agree with this, if you knew 100% that, that, that you will always be able to, to bounce back and create, why would you be worried? See, here's what I know. I know for, for the whole human history, uh, people have always wanted to trade different goods then that's why money was invented. And I guarantee that that's going to keep happening. You know, people always say, oh, you know, they ask me, Chris, what do you think about inflation? What do you think about the stock market? What do you think about this? And I always say, well, I don't know. But all I know is whatever happens, I'm going to be fine because I know how to create. I have the skills, mental models, and beliefs that whatever happens, whatever happens to me, even if I, you know, I make a mistake, wherever it goes, I'll, I'll create. And, you know, unfortunately, I had to prove that to myself in 2016. And I won't bore you with a story you guys obviously already know, but I had to prove it and, and had to rebuild from nothing. And uh, <laughs> I really hope I don't have to prove it again. But I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. So I want to ask you, what would it be like to live in creation without being worried about it going wrong, because you know that you can, you can create again. Hey, what would that be like? Really just going, you know what, I can just go for it. And uh, I know, see, that's anti-fragile. That's anti-fragile. You'll get stronger. True. And that's what I want for you. You know, for I think this this will probably be our final installment of the you know these these extra um, you know focuses just on money, um, but but what would that be like? Okay, just to go, you know what? Yeah, I think Zoe. I think it's closer. Just no matter what happens, I'm I'm going to be okay. My family is going to be okay. I'm going to be able to create. True. So when we do the double bubble, which obviously we're going to do today, we don't desire for the, the failure to happen, but we use this process to have our unconscious show us its cards of why it's so worried, why it is so uh, frightened of not having it all, of losing it. And as we get it to show the cards, we can then recode that resistance down and install a different belief, which says, I'll always bounce back. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a creator. I'll create it. I'll, I, I will ensure. And so my little guide to you is, how can you ensure that you are anti-fragile? Because that is the biggest safety mechanism. How can you make sure you have the skills, mental models, and belief structures that no matter what happens, you get stronger? No matter what pressure puts on the outside, you end up stronger. You end up, you end up in a better position. Because that's that's the place, that's the place to be. Anti-fragility. And, and it is a really, it is a really bloody good um, <laughs> you know, book and a good thing to read. What, what, what's funny is that. Uh, most people aren't anti-fragile. Most people are completely fragile. Would you agree with that? When it comes to their creation and their ability to manifest, most people are actually fragile. A little bit of pressure, boof, the whole thing blows up. Don't, don't ever be fragile. 
you know, be, be anti-fragile, know that when it, when it does, and you kind of got to realize that humans have got a, a pattern of boom and bust and boom and bust and boom and bust. And so it's very likely that those sort of things will continue. We make terrible decisions like, like that, that, that's there. However, you're a creator, you get to create whatever future it is that, uh, that you want to create. And that's, that's really, really, really important. So how would you, you know, if, if right now, if, uh, if you lost it all, you know, so like, let, let's do it, like, if right now, everything was stripped from you, bank accounts somehow got hacked, um, emptied, um, business fell apart, like literally like, fell apart. How, how do you feel about this moment? How do you feel? So, so, you know, everything is gone. Yeah, someone says sick. Fair enough. It's gone. It's ripped away. What's it like for you? And just, you know, you don't have to type it in if you don't want, but just experience that for a second. Like, how actually would that be? Like, everything gets taken. Yeah. It's not nice, is it? Not, you know, none of us want this. So what we want, what the response we want you to have is that you, of course you don't want it, but you're ready. You're ready to go and recreate, you know? You're ready to go. Like that, that's, and by the end of today, I want you to be able to go, I read this sucks. But to be able to be pragmatic, stoic, focused, ready to create what it is. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, we, we no, no, we're never going to say we want it. That's ridiculous. We, in the process that we will do, okay. We will, uh, we will, we will use that to to trigger our unconscious to show us, um, you know, what's what's so bad about that. Because the funny thing is, is uh, in nature, in all of nature, the way that we actually get stronger is how. How does something get stronger? It gets stronger through pressure, through resistance, doesn't it? And so when I look back on it. You know, each loss, and I've had some big losses, made me so much better. Made me so much better. So what if you could, and you think about this moment, so you get it all, it all gets taken away. What if you could recondition your thinking to go, well, I'm actually going to be way stronger because of this. So this is great. You know, like, this is great. Because think, think about that. Like, the way that you build strength, which means you can do more in the future, is by building that capacity, hey. And so when you when you remove that resistance to it, you're allowed to just win. Because many people, when it comes to their money, as much as I talk about being a creator, they are so worried about losing it or getting it wrong that they're never actually going for the win. Who agrees with that? They don't actually go for the win because they're too busy trying not to lose. See, the thing is, you go for the win, you might lose. You have to be okay with the short-term loss to keep going. Most people don't get to the, to the you know, the 20, 30, 40, 50 million, 1 million, 100,000 a day, whatever they're going for, they don't get to that because they're so frightened of losing the small thing that they currently have that they don't go for the big win. And the only reason that they're scared about losing it is because they do not believe in their own ability to create. Is it true? Like they just don't, they don't believe in their own ability. So they don't go, they get good ideas. They have good businesses. They have good opportunities come past them all the time, but they don't go for it, you know, because they, they code up uh, a reality where it doesn't go well and that freaks them out too much. So they, they just stop. They just stop. And, and really what they're saying is they do not believe in themselves to bounce back. So here's how the double bubble works, okay? Here's how the double bubble works. 
The first thing is we put failure, your idea of what failure is, losing it all on one side, and then on the other side, we put success. Okay, and here's, here's you in the middle. Okay, so what we do is the first, the first thing is we go all the way out to this failure and we say, I choose to experience failure. And I'll guide you through it. As you choose it, what's going to pop up is all of the reasons all of the emotions and all of the beliefs will pop up to say, "You, what are you doing? Why would you ever want this? This is terrible. What are your parents going to think? What are your kids going to think? How are you ever going to bounce back from this? All these things, all these things will pop out. Sure, they'll all pop out. They say, what about this? What about this? What about this? And what we'll do is one by one, we'll recode that, okay? until failure is no problem. And you can just go, awesome, another day at the office, let's get back to creating. Okay, then the next thing that we do is we go and uh, we do the opposite. We say, I choose the success. And we go and experience that. Now, what pops up in here are all the little things that say, Success will be so much better. My life will be amazing. Look what everyone will think about me if I have this. Look how safe I am now that I have so much money. And all the BS um, beliefs that you have around what success is going to give you, they'll all just, you know, like little gophers, pop up into your awareness. True. And so then there'll be all these, because those aren't helpful either, because honestly, you're still giving your power away to the success. So we'll recode all of that out. Does that sound good? We'll recode that out. Then we'll do what most of us do. Most of us live here in the middle where a part of us wants success and a part of us is trying to avoid the failure. And we'll go into this and we'll experience both at the same time, which is kind of how most of us live. This would be really good, but I really don't want this, but that would be good. And, I'm gonna, and, we'll, and we'll go in there and we'll notice how it's like there, and we'll recode in the middle. And we might do two rounds of this, okay? Until we get to a place where you can feel the same, whether you wake up and everything's gone wrong or everything's gone good, you feel the same. And here's how you feel. Let's get on with creating. Does that make sense? Let's get on with creating. That's that. All right. So that's what happened. Let's get on with creating the same. I, I think uh, I've got some team members on here and it'd be good to get some of their feedback is uh, it, it's quite hilarious. I'm pretty much the same. We have a big win. I'm like, it's not enough. Let's keep going. We have a tough time. It's not enough. Let's keep going. You know, it's like, this is where we're at, but there's only one mode of operation. It's, it's like, you know, I never want to experience this. But as we do, it's like, oh, damn, that annoys me. Let's get aggressive and creative. Oh, we win. Let's get aggressive and creative. You know, let's just create. Because when you realize that uh, in going for a big result, uh, sometimes you need a learning experience. You need to come back stronger. Let's go. Let's get creative. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.